Hello, everybody. I'm doing something kind of earlier in the morning for a change instead of late at night. Right now it's about 10.20. Uh, it's not super early, but it's still in the morning. And I have my laptop here because I am going to do a review of this laptop that I've been using for about three and a half weeks. Now, first of all, with any laptop review, one thing that never gets taken into account is longevity. I mean, when people buy laptops, they hope that they will last for at least a few years, but they're not going to know that for a few years because only time will tell. And the only problem is, you can't take that into account into a review, so that's just how it is. There's nothing that can really be done about that. Also, I'm using my ghetto, unorthodox setup, where I have my cell phone on top of my music stand to record this. So, that's going to... It might wobble a little bit, but that's kind of how I'm, what I have for a tripod-type setup. So, that's just how it's going to be. But, let's get started. So, first... I got this from Amazon.com, and I'll talk more about that at the end, and I'm going to go over the specs first. So the CPU is one of the Intel Core i7 4th Gen Haswell, that's the 4700HQ, with uh, it's quad core, 2.4 gigahertz. The GPU is an NVIDIA GTX 850M with 2 gigabytes, it's got 8 gigabytes of I think DDR3 RAM, and those are really the main specs. I mean, it's got USB ports and whatnot. It has HDMI out, but no VGA, so keep that in mind if that's something you want. It also has a DVD drive, which is nice. Of course, the card reader, and um, the port for headphones and a microphone is a combined, and I will talk a little bit about that. I've had a couple issues with that, and I will get into that later. Now, that's really most of the main specs. Oh, yes, and I believe it has wireless A, B, G, N, and AC. And it does have an Intel wireless card. It's not one of the crappy Ethereum cards, so yay. Now, one of the first thing I want to talk about, first things I want to talk about, excuse me, is build quality. So this on the top is a dark piece of uh, aluminum. The bottom is also dark, and this is also aluminum. And the speakers, I can't really make them very visible, but they're right along here at the bottom, which people don't really like, but I will talk about that. Now, here's the thing. Somebody asked me, because they said the photo on Amazon makes the top look like it's more silver. No, the top is, in fact, this dark color, like this very dark gray, or black. These Asus letters right here light up, which I think looks cool, so that's nice. And the one thing about the bottom is the battery is not removable, and there isn't easy access to the hard drive and RAM, so if you want to change those things, you will need a Torx 5 screwdriver, and you have to take off the entire bottom, which I think might technically void their warranty, but there aren't any seals or anything. I mean, I already replaced the hard drive. There aren't any seals or anything, and I don't think they would really have any way of knowing. I mean, if I were to sign it in, I would probably put back in the original hard drive, but I don't think they'll find out. Uh, unless you mess with the CPU, because I heard that actually does have a seal. So, just keep that in mind. The battery is not removable, huh? Or replaceable, really. But, now let's get into the inside of this laptop. So, let me open it up. And, let me cover the, um... I'm gonna have to cover the, um, camera. Because I have to type in my password now. And because it's synced with my Microsoft account, you know... Alright. We're good. I have a bunch of Sonic wallpapers I'm using as my background because I'm a huge Sonic fan. <laughs> now, let's get the screen out of the view entirely so it doesn't interfere with the white balance. Let's look at the keyboard. So, I kind of said the same things in my, um, my first impressions video, and this is just sort of rehashing a lot of them, but I will talk about the graphics and gaming more. Although, I'm not going to go super in-depth. I may do a separate video in the future going more in-depth about my graphics settings and, uh, you know, putting them on low, medium, high, and ultra and then seeing how it performs in the future, though. I'm not going to do that for this video. The keyboard, it's alright. It's just a laptop keyboard. They have to make the keys so small and thin, they don't press down very far and there really isn't a lot of tactile feedback, but that is to be expected because it's a laptop. There's not a whole lot that can be done about that. You know, without making the computer considerably thicker. But it works, so overall, my verdict for the feel of the keyboard is good enough. 
the one nice thing about it is it has a backlight, so it lights up like this. Yeah. It has three brightness settings, and I do frequently use this if I'm playing video games like late at night in the complete dark, with the exception of, you know, the computer screen. I have it on setting number two, and it's a very nice feature to have. It works very well. So that is a nice feature. The keyboard is backlit. That's awesome. Um, that's really it for the keyboard. Next thing is the touchpad. Now, I'm still kind of getting used to this one solid piece where the click buttons are part of the touchpad, where you can put your finger right here and still move the cursor. This hasn't been a big issue, but I'm still kind of getting used to it, and occasionally what happens is if I'm clicking, I might wobble my finger when I'm pressing down, which will move the cursor, which might result in me not being accurate. I might end up clicking on the wrong thing, then I have to, like, hit back page in the internet browser and then click something else again. So, <clears throat> that's annoying when it happens, and I'm just, I'm not very fast with the touchpad, basically. So, but I do use, uh, most of the time I do end up using a mouse. Uh, one other thing is this button right here, the Asus button thing, whatever. You press this button like I did just now, and it opens up the Asus console which you can reprogram it to open up something else, I believe, but I'm, I don't think I'm going to do that because I just, I don't really use it. And you can view a bunch of information and change, like, you can turn off the touchpad and turn it back on. You can change your power saving mode, view your storage, and you can mess with some other features, too. I'm not going to, I don't know, I haven't really used it a whole lot. Now, uh, heating is going to be another um, important thing to talk about. So this computer, I'm going to take the camera off again. This computer has a hot spot right about here, because it has vents right along here. You probably can't see them very well, but that's where the vents are. Now, I use something that people say to never ever do with a laptop, and that is I play games with my laptop on my bed, which is not a very um, hard surface, so I can't really take advantage of the pads to elevate the bottom to not block the vents. However, even when I've done this, I've never really had major problems with heat. Yes, it gets pretty hot right in the hot spot, but it's never gotten unmanageable. So heating, just as long as you have this thing elevated, Heating is not going to be an issue at all. So, that's good. Also, the vents in the back that I showed you kind of point upward, which is nice. Um, there are also a couple on the bottom, but the air comes out of that back one that I just showed you. So, although this thing gets pretty hot, it's not unmanageable. Yes. Next thing I want to talk about is uh, battery life. So, I haven't done the most scientific tests with the battery, but it's it's a four cell battery, I think, <laughs> and uh, when you're just doing normal things like, I don't know, um, just browsing the internet, this thing seems to last for about two to two and a half hours, I would say, and if you want to play graphically intensive games, then at the very most you'll probably get maybe an hour and a half, I'd say probably closer to an hour, an hour and fifteen minutes, just, I don't know, I would recommend using it plugged in, as I do most of the time. Next thing I want to talk about is actually one of the issues I had, and that is audio. So, the integrated, or the combined port, I do not like. I wish there was a separate headphone port and a separate microphone port. Now, when I plug in my earphones, I have to wait for the Realtek audio manager to open and click some stuff. And it doesn't take very long, and I'm getting used to it, but it's something I have never had to do before and I kind of wish I didn't have to do. And the other issue I said I had was um, with um, the microphone, where I seem to have some issues where the microphone gets really quiet if I plug in earphones. Like, um, I have to kind of, I have to talk very loud in order for um, the microphone to pick up um, my voice very well. Otherwise, if I just talk like this, um, without my earphones plugged in, it would probably record it just fine, but if I had my earphones plugged in just talking like this, everything would be super quiet, and uh, you, it, wouldn't, it would be very hard to hear my voice. Yeah. Another issue I've had was with uh, the earphones themselves. So when I plug them in, sometimes I would hear the little buzzing noise every once in a while. I, 
I talked about this before, and I said that I thought updating the driver fixed it, but I don't really know. It seems to happen less often, but it still does happen. However, when it does happen, I seem to be able to fix it by either wiggling the, the headphone jack around or by wiggling around the cord for the headphones. So, those are really the only couple of issues I've had. It's certainly not a deal breaker with this computer. I mean, I have workarounds. Um, I have my headset, or I can just take out the earphones if I need to record something with the microphone, I guess. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. Alright, next thing is the audio quality. So the audio on this thing can get decently loud for a laptop. It's not super, super high quality, although I haven't really been around uh, super, super high quality sound systems um, long enough for me to be able to compare this to them. So I just, the only thing I can really do is say, yeah, it's good enough. Good enough gets the job done. I will give you a small sample. Now, I don't have the best music to test it with because copyright uh, concerns. And so I have something that, of, um, I have something, or I have a, um, a sound recording of me playing something on the piano. It's not actually the best piece to test the subwoofer with because the subwoofer um, accentuates, like, the bass sounds. But I think you'll be able to notice the difference when I plug it in. So this thing came with this external subwoofer and... Like I said, it amplifies bass. And I'm going to show you the audio on this thing without and with the subwoofer. So first, without. Let me get it ready, though. Alright. This is without. With. There we go. Without again. Alright, that's enough. So as you hopefully were able to hear, this may have something just to do with the microphone on my camera, but when I plugged it in, I could hear the bass sounds more clearly um, when I had the subwoofer plugged in. And if you know what piece that was, you, you win. That's just it. You win. Nothing else. You win. If you can tell me, like, in the comments what piece that was. So this, the sound quality is alright. The subwoofer, it works. Uh, yeah, it works. Now, uh, the only concern might be that it might be a little inconvenient to have to carry this thing around um, with you, just in fear that it doesn't, that it might break, or that it just doesn't fit well into your case. I usually don't leave it in my case because I'm worried it might break in there. So, but I, I usually use earphones anyway, so I haven't really been exposed significantly to the audio. Next thing I want to mention is the screen. As I mentioned, the screen is a 1080p touchscreen. The touchscreen works nice, but most of the time I'm using a mouse anyway, and pretty much every application I use works just fine with a mouse. Um, there's not a whole lot to say about the 1080p, though. It, it looks nice. Everything is very crisp in HD, and it's beautiful. There's not a whole lot to say about it. it. It's It works. And it's nice to play games in 1080p. Of course, this thing has the built-in webcam and microphone up top. Generally, right around here. And there's not a whole lot to say about it. It gets the job done. It works. Uh, yeah, same with the microphone. When I can get it to work, it works just fine. It's not the highest quality, of course. I mean, anything that's built in isn't going to be the highest quality. But it works, and, um, you know, you can see through the camera, you can see what's being recorded, and you can hear and understand what's being said. So, is there really anything else you need? Anyway, that concludes pretty much everything not game-related. So, now I will have some gameplay footage to show you, and I'll talk about the FPS I'm getting. And I will um, show my settings, too, that I have for each of these games. My first game I have to test here is Borderlands 2. So these are my settings, and this game runs pretty well. I get about 30 frames per second um, with these settings, and I have a lot that are quite high. 
and overall it runs a lot better than it did on my HP computer, so I'm satisfied with the performance of this game. Next up I have Skyrim, and as you can see I have quite a few settings pretty high, and for as high as the settings are, this game actually runs for the most part at 60 frames per second. Uh, so that's pretty cool, although I don't play it as often. Now with Gmod I don't have any specific numbers, but I'll just tell you, many of my settings are pretty high, and this game runs pretty well, although I don't have a, sp a specific FPS number, it runs pretty well. Lastly, Battlefield 4. So this game also runs, well, it runs about, about anywhere from, I want to say, 41 to 45 frames per second with these settings. And I had to get some Michael Bay explosions in here. Actually, they're not big enough to be Michael Bay explosions, but I just wanted to test it out with something like that. And again, it runs well. As you can see, this computer plays games pretty well. I can turn up quite a few of the settings up pretty high and still get about 30 frames per second. And that's what I like about this computer. It plays the games well. Now, um, comparing it to something like an Asus Republic of Gamers computer, I actually spoke to somebody who um, has one, and he said there are two things he doesn't like. One, it gets pretty hot, but so does this computer. And two, he said it's not the most portable thing out there. And... That's one thing, other thing I really like about this computer. Uh, it's pretty portable for as powerful as it is. It's not oversized, it's, I mean, it's not an ultrabook, but it's pretty portable and it's not overly heavy. And that's what I like about it. So, this thing is about $1,100 on Amazon right now. I got it a little cheaper, but it's about $1,100. And I think for the hardware it comes with, I think it would be worth it if this was something you were looking into getting. Because the thing is, having a dedicated video card like this significantly jacks up the price. Yeah. If you want something like very high-end, like if you want a very high-end gaming laptop and you're willing to spend the money, then go go for it, get whatever you want. But if you if you want something like this, that's this is actually, I think, marketed as a multimedia laptop, although wouldn't video games be an example of multimedia? But either way, it plays video games pretty well anyway. It's pretty powerful, it's got powerful hardware, and it's nice and compact. So overall, I like that it's nice and compact and powerful. I certainly would recommend this computer right now, uh, because I haven't really had any major problems yet. And that really concludes my review of this computer. One last thing, in case anyone wanted to know, I believe this model came out like back in, um, I think, April of this year. And the GPU, I think, came out, out around uh, the same time, so it's still fairly recent, fairly modern. Well, modern, anything would be considered modern, I guess, that's out there. But it's fairly recent, and it's not going to be out of date for quite some time. That is all I have to say for this review. Uh, bye.